this follows the same pattern as the unit circle. Okay, sine and cosine and tangent, all your trig functions are what we consider periodic functions. Okay, periodic functions, that means that they have a certain pattern that repeat itself. Um, now, trig functions are not the only functions that are considered periodic, they're just the most common. Um, so if you hear that term, what it means is it has a pattern that repeats itself. Um, so, our unit circle kind of lends us, uh, lends itself to the fact of what that pattern is. Uh, we know that if we go all the way around the circle, we hit all the possible values and then they start repeating themselves. Okay, so what we call the period of the sine function is 2 pi. So with your paper, what I want you to do is I want you to turn it so that it's wider. Um, because we're, we're going to go that way. And on your x-axis, you need to count about, let's go like, um, let's go like 12 units. Okay, 12 units. Uh, and at the end of 12 units is going to be 2 pi. Okay, at the end of 12 units is going to be 2 pi. You also need to do it to the left as well. You need to go um, 12 units to the left and do negative 2 pi. Now, I'm not going to have it up here on my picture because I don't have enough room, um, but I'll, I'll talk you through what you're going to have on yours. Okay, then we're going to split it in half. Okay, halfway between 0 and 2 pi is pi, and then we're going to split that in half and look at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, and then you need to go uh, about 5 blocks on the horizontal axis and go up to 1 and go down about 5 blocks and do negative 1 for your y values. And we are going to graph the sine function. So our function here is going to be f of x equals the sine of x. So x here is representing the angles. Okay, it's representing the angles. So if you've got your unit circle handy, uh, now would be a good time to pull it out because we're going to need to reference it. Okay, so pull out your unit circle so we can look up some values here. So. Whenever you're graphing something, it's usually a good place to start is at zero, right? Plug in zero into the function and go from there. So what is the sine of zero? Anybody? Sine of zero. Zero. Sine is the y coordinate. So when our angle is zero degrees or zero, we're talking about radians here. When it's zero radians, then the y value is zero. So the sine function goes through the origin. It doesn't start at the origin, but it passes through the origin. Now, what's the sine of pi over 2? Pi over 2, find it on the unit circle. What's the y coordinate? 1. Okay, apparently we need to do a little bit more practice on this. <clears throat> sine of pi on the unit circle. Find pi. Tell me what the y coordinate is. Zero. Pi is over there on the left side. So the sine of that is zero. How about 3 pi over 2? I'm hitting the north, south, east, and west here, guys. So go directly south. 3 pi over 2. What's the y value? Negative 1. All right, 2 pi, what's the value of sine? Zero, because 2 pi is the same thing as zero radians, okay? Now, that's not a whole lot of detail to fill in this picture. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, because, I, I, I don't know, do we connect this with straight lines? What do we need to do? So, I didn't hit any of the values in between. I didn't create any of the values in each quadrant. So let's think about those for just a second. Uh, how about pi over 4? Since that's nice and even, that would be directly between 0 and pi over 2. What is the y value at pi over 4? Square root 2 over 2. Well, 
How am I supposed to know what square root of 2 over 2 is? Well, let's just find out. Square root of 2, let's get a decimal approximation for it. It is 0.7. Okay, it's 0.7. So fit that somewhere on your graph there. Um, at pi over 6, that one's kind of easy. That one's at 0.5. And at pi over 3, then we talked about that one a good little bit the other day. That one was almost 0.9. So hopefully, and hopefully even more so on your picture since you've got more space, you've got actual lines. Each box on yours, I said to go up 5, so each box is like 0.2. So you should be able to pretty accurately graph 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9. Um, you should see that there's some curve to this. Now, we could keep going and keep adding all this detail, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that th this pattern is going to continue. Okay, so it's a curved segment <clears throat> from the point at pi over 2 to pi. Put some curve on it from here to here. Put some curve on it there. Okay, now what's going to happen and you need to do this on your paper, I don't have enough room here, but that pattern is going to repeat, okay? It's going to repeat. So um, this is what we call one cycle, okay? Sine starts, goes through the origin, okay? It hits its maximum at one, goes back through zero, hits a minimum at negative one, and gets back to, to zero. That is one cycle uh, and we typically talk about the period equaling 2 pi. Okay. The period equals 2 pi. That's a term you need to be familiar with. I don't know if they're just going to ask you to match a graph to an equation or if they're going to ask you specific questions about the period or the amplitude or something like that. So the amplitude, the amplitude is the distance from the midline and I'll explain what the midline here is in just a second. The distance from the midline to the maximum slash minimum. You can look at it either way because this is symmetric. So the midline is what kind of cuts our graph here in half. So in this case, the midline is the x-axis. Now we're going to look here in a minute about what happens if we move that or what part of the equation moves that. But right now, the midline is the x-axis. That's where our graph is kind of centered. If we start there and go to the maximum, it's the same distance as if we start there and go to the minimum. So our amplitude, our standard amplitude is 1. It is always positive. Okay, the amplitude is always positive. Um, but it's the distance from the midline to the maximum slash minimum. You can look at it either way. Um, before we go on, on your graph, I want you to um, continue this pattern. So I want you to start at negative 2 and draw this exact same graph. Okay, It should look exactly the same, but start at negative 2. And it should join back up at the origin. And I want you to put another cycle on the end of this. Start at 2 pi, copy the pattern. Where are we going to end? Where would it end when we add it to this end? How long is the cycle? 2 pi. So if we start at 2 pi, where are we going to end? 4 pi. Okay. It takes 2 pi units right here to do one cycle. So if we stick another cycle on the end of this, the cycle will end at 4 pi. Okay, so I want y'all to do that. So let's look at how to graph these on the calculator. Okay, first of all, pull it out. Make sure you are in radian mode because our x-axis is going to be labeled in radians. Make sure that you are in radian mode. Now, 
if you're using one of my calculators, you may need to clear out what's already in there because we did this in first period, so they probably left the stuff in there. Just clear it out. In Y1, I want you to just type in sine of X. Now, don't automatically press correct. We're going to adjust the window first. So go to your window. Now I told you that I wanted you to, to graph all the way from negative 2 pi to positive 4 pi. You can type that in here. Type negative 2 pi and press enter. When you press enter, it's going to turn it into a decimal, but that's fine. Okay, all the way up to 4 pi. So 4 pi and press enter. Now the way that we have our graph labeled, um, we've got it broken up by pi over 2. So type that in for the x scale, pi over 2. Now, because we're going to start looking at some other stuff, I know that our y values only go from negative 1 to 1, but go ahead and set it on negative 5 to 5. Okay, just so that here in a minute we won't have to worry about changing that part. Okay. Now press graph. So here's what your paper should look like right now. From negative 2 pi to 4 pi, you should see three complete cycles of the sine function. When we start over here on the x-axis, we go up to the maximum, we go through the midline, we get our minimum, and we go back to our starting point. That's one cycle that we should be working. Then another one starts. Then it ends at 2 pi, then another one starts. Bless you, and it ends at the end of our graph here at 4 pi. Um, so that's what your paper should look like. If it doesn't, tweak it before we move on. So here's the deal. They aren't just going to ask you to graph the sine of x. Okay, there are different things. Think about functions. Think about all the different functions we've dealt with. They're not just x squared. They're 3x squared minus 4x plus 7. Okay, they've got other stuff multiplied and added and subtracted and there are lots of different factors. Well, we can do that with these trig functions as well. So, somebody give me a number between negative 5 and 0. Negative 3. Okay. Negative 3. So, negative 3. F of x equals negative 3 sine of x. So, let me go ahead and tell you what that number does. Well, let me see if I can ask this question. If I put negative 3 in front of x squared, okay, so instead of graphing x squared, I said I want you to graph negative 3 x squared. Do you all know what would happen to the graph? You're gonna, it's going to get closer together because it's going to get taller because we're multiplying all of our x squared numbers by 3. So it's going to get taller. What does that negative do to it? Flips it. Okay, it flips it. Well, guess what? That's the same thing that's happening right here. We're taking our sine of x function and we're multiplying our y values by negative 3. So it's going to flip it over and it's going to make it taller. So if our answer is 0, multiplying 0 by negative 3 isn't going to change it. It's still going to be at 0. But what about this maximum point right here? The sine of pi over 2 is 1. We multiply by negative 3, so now the answer is negative 3. 0 is not going to change. Okay. 3 pi over 2 gives us an answer of negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. 2 pi is not going to change. Okay, it's just going to keep happening here. So I purposefully graphed the black one is just the plain sine of x. And here is this first transformation according to this equation. So, which word that I introduced you to did the negative 3 affect? The period or the amplitude? The amplitude, the height of it, the distance from the midline to the minimum and or maximum point, however you want to look at it. Instead of it being 1, it's now 3. Okay, Amplitude is always positive. So this is the coefficient, we call it the coefficient A. 
It's really nice. They're, they're going to go in alphabetical order here. So this is called.